slide. Welcome to all listeners. Following the first session, we are entering into the second session. This session deals with the course BS one to one childhood and growing up. Let I introduce myself, Elizabeth Kurula from School of Education. Today's session is titled as Childhood in Different Contexts, Implications for Teachers. When you think of childhood, when you think of your own childhood or when I thought of my own childhood, we have different experiences. And how we define the childhood, it depends upon the context we nurtured upon. And normally, when we think of this childhood experiences, we can say that it varies from individual to individual. Let me see the objectives of today's session. The session aims to sensitize teachers about diverse socio-economic and cultural background of learners. Secondly, it discusses the varied growing up experiences of children and their impact on teaching learning process. Let me discuss from the context what is important from early childhood infancy stage and towards the later childhood and adolescent stage. In early period, most of the children under 6 years of age spent most of their time in the care and company of family members in a home setting. So here we can see that the home setting is an important context of a child development. Hence, early development in context focused exclusively on mother-child relationship and the home environment. With the awareness of modern family system, there occurs the need for women's workforce participation. Due to that women's workforce participation and the increased educational and occupational opportunity and more economic benefit, women also entered into the workplace. So what's happening is that the context starts differing. How it differs, we can see that the caregiver may not be a parent. It may be another person. So the child is left from the mother. Instead of a parent, he or she is left to a caregiver. So we can see why this type of changes is happening and child development is conceptualized as a transactional process. Care transactional process is? We can see that it is an emphasis placed on the interplay of individual and context as well as on the interactions between and among context. So here, when we think of a child, you as teachers, you are coming to classroom. Sometimes you are seeing your children in a mass group. Are you able to identify or whether you take an effort to understand the background of each learner? Here, what is the meaning of context? Context are often thought of as merely the physical environments 
that children experience directly through what they can see, hear, touch, smell and taste. And in this session, I am talking about the context in the sense that of the physical, social, cultural and political environment that determine the type and quality of opportunities, interactions and experiences children will have in their day-to-day -day life. What they are interacting before they are coming to school in the home environment or in a child care center or crush, what type of interaction is taking place? It determines the development of the child. See the screen, you can see that the different context of growing up experiences of children. Look at one side, you can see the migrant children. And you are familiar with how much they have suffered during this pandemic period also. They are migrating from one place to another place. So what type of experiences or the context their children are getting? They are getting a different context which affects their psychosocial development of children. Then the next scene you can see about the poverty. You can see there are children from the disadvantaged background. This poverty really affects the growth of each child. How it affects the socio-emotional element is a major factor in the development of each child. Coming to the third figure, we can see the child labor. Children are compelled to do some work because of the low socio-economic status of their family. In order to run the family, in order to move the family forward, they were compelled to do some kind of labor. Though it is denied in the in constitutional acts, but still we can see the children who are doing some kind of labor. And coming to the next figure, you can see the parenting role. What type of things is happening when the parents went to the workplace? Children are acting or playing the role of nurturing their siblings. So these are the different contexts of growing up experiences of children. From this background, we can see that there are some children in your classroom who are coming and attending your school with these type of context. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the context of childhood in terms of the bioecological perspective. So the ecology of human development, it was put forward by Yuri Brenner. What is the essence of this perspective is that it consists of several concentric circles model of human development. And when you think of these concentric circles, you know that the different contexts are embedded in it. And according to Yuri Brenner, he stated that each child is surrounded by a nested set of influences where one layer is embedded in the other layer. So when you look at this ecology of human development, who is at the center of the circle is the child is at the center and the context of development is radiating out from the individual child experience in proximal to distal order. Here 
the proximal means the center, the nearest thing. So who is at the proximal? That is the child is at the proximal. And then from that proximal circle, the circle is extending towards the outside circle. That is the distal order. That is the distant circle or the layer. So let me see. So from the scene you can see how the layer is. The child is at the center. You can see the different context which is influencing the growing up experiences of a child. Brock and Brenner's ecological model suggests that socialization occurs in context and the child is in the center of concentric circles which are modeled by various layers of context. And these various layers of context has a different type of impact on the development or the developmental needs of children. So you can see the different layers. Now the squid. There on the right side you can see the different layers that is the microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, macrosystem. So these are the different layers that you can see. And on the left side you can see two things that is chronosystem which is also another form of layer and above that the chronosystem it is decided by the time factor. Who are coming under the microsystem? Parents, caregivers and child. Coming to the mesosystem, you can see that neighborhood, school, peers, religious institutions. And coming to the exosystem, you can see the parents, workplace, mass media, government and social policy. And coming to the macro system, you can see the historical events, attitudes and ideas of the culture and the ethnic group. And in the corona system, we can see that various events occur in the life of an individual. When we think of this micro system, we may say that it is the immediate environment that influence the growth of a child. So it is the immediate context where the child is interacting in their day-to-day -day lives. So what is the context? All of you know that it is family. We are born and brought up in a family. And here, when we think of this micro system, as I have stated in the beginning that with the emergence of the modern family system, parents, both of them, father and mother, they are compelled to go to workplace for the economic benefit of the family. And in such cases, the children may be sent to the crash or any daycare center, there you can see how the caregiver is taking care of the child. So the context of a child nurturing in a family and in a daycare center, it is different. And how it affects the so psychosocial development of a child. And you can see that here the micro system is reflecting the various contexts where the child is coming into or the child is interacting in that day to day life. The first context, family. Next, religious institution, peers, neighborhood play area, school daycare and health services. 
And let me think of this family structure. What type of family structures are now we have in society? Look at the first picture. You can see that there is one single, one parent only. So single parent family. So this is a growing phenomenon that we can see in society. Either because of divorce, the increasing cases of divorce, there are so many single parent family structure. What is happening to the child in this type of family structure? So the context of the single parent family structure, how it influences the growth of a child? There we can see that the one parent is compelled to do both roles, father and mother. So they may not be able to satisfy the child in their role play of father and mother. And in this case, we can see that the child emotional support that a child gets from a father and mother is missing because of single parent family. So there are children who are coming from this context. And the second picture you can see that is the nuclear family where it composes of father, mother and children. They are both parents. That is the traditional thing that we can see. There, the children are satisfied with the emotional support. But there are also some kind of disequilibrium in the emotional status of the child when there occurs conflicts. So, when we think of these conflicts, how it negatively affects the psychosocial development of the child. As you are working as a teacher or and as a parent also. And you know very well when there occurs conflicts or when conflicts arises in the family, how does it affect the behavior of the child for that particular moment? They are developing some kind of negative emotions in their mind. And think of this Divorce cases, there also occurs what type of thing is that the stress roles of the single parent, it also creates a negative attitude in the growing up experiences of children. Coming to the next picture, you can see the joint family where rarely it is, it can be seen in today's society. There we can see that the extended support the child gets, more than the parents, the child is getting extended support from their grandmother and grandfather. So there, what is happening is that if a child is having any emotional crisis, if parents are working, there is other member to listen to their voice. They can share their ideas, they can share their worries and how they are coping up with the stressful situations. And coming to the next picture, you can see that their very poverty background, their parents are compelled to go to work from early morning, from morning to the evening time they are working. So such children that is the low socio-economic status family. How is their mind set up? There the children are not considered as children. Sometimes they were compelled to take care of their siblings. They were compelled to do some kind of jobs. In such type of context, we can see that such children may not experience the stage of childhood due to the family situations. So this is all about this family structures. And you can see that the interactions within the microsystem typically involve personal relationship 
with family members, classmates, teachers and caregivers. How these groups of individuals interact with the children will affect their how they grow. So the growing up stages of child. Here the growing up doesn't mean the physical growth. Here includes the holistic growth of a child. So how we are taking care of these type of children. It is very important. So the interaction within the microsystem is an important factor. Sometimes the child may not be getting enough interaction time with their parents due to their work pressure. Such type of children may find or need an outlet in the school with a teacher. So as a teacher, you are the surrogate parents of your children. So you know that we call the school as the second home of a child. So in that aspect, the context, what type of context the school is giving is important. So here, the child should find an outlet to share their emotions or the emotional crisis with their teacher. Similarly, how children react to people in their microsystem will also influence how they treat the children in return. More nurturing and more supportive interactions and relationship will understandably foster children's improved development. Think of a family's context where they, the child is getting enough emotional support. Such type of children will have a positive environment, a positive growth in their developmental stage. When we think of this, the other situation where there is a negative environment in the home structure or the home environment, what type of the support or the attitude the each child will have. They have a negative emotional mentality. Then coming to the second layer, that is the mesosystem, there also occurs different types of context where it contains the relationship between the microsystem. So we may call the mesosystem, it consists of the interrelationship or linkages between two or more microsystems. So here we can see that the mesosystem, it encompasses of the interaction of the different microsystems which children find themselves in. So it is in essence a system of microsystems and involves linkages between home and school, between peer group and family, and between family and community. So here, when you look at the meso system, as a formula, we can see that the meso system is equal to two or more micro systems. So which are the micro system which is combining together we can say either it is the family and the school, the peer and the family, the family and the community. And if a child parents are actively involved in the friendship of the child. For example, they invite the child's friends over to the house from time to time and spend time with them that the child's development is affected positively through harmony and like-mindedness. However, if the child's parents dislike the child's peers and openly criticize them, then the child experiences disequilibrium and conflicting emotions which will likely lead to negative development. So here, in family context, 
what is important is that the parents should be very careful while dealing with the children while dealing with their peers it doesn't mean that the parents should encourage or welcome all their friends but there should be an eye upon what type of peer relationship each child is having and coming to the next context in this meso system that is the neighborhood as a context of development and nowadays the influence of neighborhood on child's development or childhood stage it is an important thing neighborhoods and school are the two contexts in which children spend most amount of the time for making friends forming opinions and attitudes and learning social and academic skills that help the children to lead their daily life and you know that sometimes the parents may be going to their workplace by the time the neighbors might be taking care so what type of neighborhood context each child has that is an important thing neighborhoods determine who has a detrimental impact on parental mental health parental behavior here parental behavior consist includes parenting style supervision and monitoring about children who are committing suicide because they don't have the gadgets to continue their education so this of context is also important in the educational process of each child and thirdly we can see that the impact of neighborhood it occurs in the in terms of social processes here social processes means the social connections between parents in the neighborhood under my for those living in more disadvantaged areas which then affects child outcomes suppose a child is living in a street we cannot deny that such children are not in our classes they they are there there are such type of children in our classes also disadvantaged children and when there occurs some behavioral maladjustment in such type of children how do we as teachers we are reacting how do we react towards such type of children are we punishing them all on a sudden without understanding their background or without understanding what is the reason for such type of behavioral maladjustment among such type of children so there is a need to think about such type of aspects so teachers or as parents there is a time to rethink about our dealing how do we deal with our children neighborhood social economic composition may affect the quantity and quality of institutional resources available to children such as schools health and social services recreational programs and the like neighborhood composition is thought to contribute to community norms regarding both parents and children's behavior so we have seen the micro system as a context or as a layer how it influence the growth or the growing up experiences of the child and then in the meso system we have seen the family structure how it influences the growth of a child and next context is school how do school as a context influence the development of a child and schooling we know that we give more emphasis for the acquisition of knowledge and skills and secondly we may think that there is a social and emotional growth 
and children daily experiences at school affect their behavior beliefs and well-being the cumulative effects of children's schooling experiences strongly contribute to the lives as adults including future educational opportunities career choices and lifetime earnings here we have to think about the urban rural schools whether there is a divide between this urban rural schools yes when we think of this rural school what type of facilities such type of children are getting how such rural background or the rural context of school influence the educational progress of a child so whether there is some decrease in the resources of such type of schools teachers can play a major role in developing the educational outcomes of such type of children but in the case of the urban background what is lacking is that the playground the children's physical development which is an important thing that the sports conducting sports they may not be getting enough space so that also will affect the emotional development of the child so play is also an important aspect in the developmental growth of a child and the next system what we are discussing is the exo system the exo system pertains to the linkages that may exist between two or more settings one of which may not contain the developing children but affect them indirectly nonetheless based on the findings of brock and brenner people and places that children may not directly interact with may still have an impact on the life such places and people may include the parents workplaces extended family members and mass media so we can say in a nutshell that the exo system it refers to social settings that a child may not experience directly but that can influence his or her development for example parents suppose they are most stressed in their workplace coming home they may be taking their stress or there might have occurred a conflicting situation with their boss so coming home the same anger may be carried at home and we know that they may try to project their anger upon children so how it is affecting the socio emotional development of children we know that sometimes we may behave like that or teachers also from home what conflicting situations they have the same emotional setup may be carried in the classroom sometimes we may project our anger towards the children so the context in the exo system is also an important factor how it influences the development of the child so as teachers we have to be careful while dealing with children what are our emotional moods or the strings that we have in our mind are we carrying the negative emotional swings to the children in our classroom so that is also an important thing we have to be very careful while dealing with children in our classroom then the next one which exerts greater influence on the development of the child is media and you know that how this during this pandemic situation 
children got lot of time to spend with this media or the digital technologies. Here you can see that a very famous statement put forward by the American Academy of Pediatrics Council on Communications and Media. Let I quote the same words because children have high levels of exposure, media have greater access and time to shape young people's attitudes and actions than do parents or teachers. Replacing them as educators, role models and the primary sources of information about the world and how one behaves in it. So in this statement, it is mentioned that how the role of the teacher is replacing. But when we think in real sense, whether the teacher can be substituted by the digital technology? No, not at all. The teacher has a major role in shaping or molding the behavior of a child. So media as a context of development, how it helps a child in a positive way or in a negative way. Both sides we can see the influences of media upon the growing up experiences of children. Children in the 21st century learn and develop in the context of electronic media and we may call them as digital kids. Next, we can see there is increasing use of all kinds of media. And next, we can see that there is the creation and use of media designed for children aged 2 and under. But during this pandemic situation, we have listened from parents telling that they have some kind of fear in their minds while they give these mobile phones to children, how do it influence the growth of the child. But there should be an adult supervision upon the children, how the children are using. You should play the role of a scaffold. You should scaffold the children how to use media in a positive way. Next we can see that the children of today is different from our growing up situation. They are always engaged in multitasking. So here this multitasking, it requires more than one medium using at a time such as texting on a cell phone while watching creation. And use of media platforms such as the smartphone are digital, interactive and easily transportable. So you can see that in ICRO we are able to continue the study through digital technologies in times of pandemic situation. So this is one type of positive uh, outcome of the context of media. But we have to think how do media use affects children's cognitive development? So here the media use, even the video games. Experts are telling that the gamers are faster than novices at deploying attentional skills and can transfer those attentional skills to other tasks. We have seen how media is influencing the cognitive and educational outcomes. You know that already I have mentioned about the multitasking. Divided attention is requires in multitask. Because the ch children must attend to multiple stimuli in order to succeed at video game play. Then think about the spatial skills. It also improves when children play video games that require visualization of spatial fields. So what type of 
space is needed. So the spatial visualization is developing through these video games. And then when we comes to this macro system, we can see that the macro system is the largest cultural context in which the micro system, meso system and exo system are embedded. Then when we think of this macro system which is the outer layer of the growing up context of child, we may tell that it is the largest and most distant collection of people and places to the children that still have significant influences on them. This ecological system is composed of the children's cultural patterns and values, specifically their dominant beliefs and ideas as well as political and economic systems. For example, children in war-torn areas will experience a different kind of development than children in peaceful environments. Think of situations those children who are having or growing up in the context of war zone area. What is their mental development? They are always having a fear about the attack from the soldiers. So that we can see that there are child soldiers in the present society also. Are they nurtured in that way in their family situations by their parents? No. They are compelled to become child soldiers due to their circumstances or due to their context where they are born and brought up. So what type of psychosocial development such children are having? Whether they experience any joyful childhood state? No, they don't have any joyful childhood state. What is their mind is eagerly for? They are really eagerly or waiting for peaceful environment, which is an essential thing for a positive development of the child. Next comes the chrono system where the different events are important. The chrono system adds the dimension of time which demonstrates the influence of both change and constancy in children's environments. The chrono system may include a change in family structure, parents' employment status, as well as immense society changes such as economic cycles and wars. From the picture you can see how these different events that occur in different timing affect the development of the child. You can see how the socioeconomic status affects the development of the child, how the new siblings or the new birth in the home affects the development of the elder child. When the younger comes a child coming, the elder child must feel that their needs or their attention is getting less by their parents. Parents are now interested or giving more attention to the baby child instead of my needs. So all these things will influence the developmental context of child. And the next chrono system event when we think of this transfer, when there is occurs transfer from one place of parents from one place to another, you can see that how it affects the developmental context of the child. So in one place, the child may have good friends and they are compelled to 
moved to another place due to the transfer of parents. So how it affects? They have to make new friends again. And how it affects the context of the development of the child. And again, earlier, we have discussed about the divorce, how it affects the developmental context of a child. So we have to understand that we have to satisfy as parents, as teachers, we have to satisfy the developmental needs of each child. And here, now we have discussed the, about the different context where childhood stage is entering upon. Now we come to the main point about how this childhood in different context influence the teacher. So what type of implications are needed for the teachers? Here as teachers, let I put before you a question that how do we prepare teachers and educational leaders to facilitate an inclusive classroom? Is your classroom inclusive in nature? Then, are we taking any effort to understand the background of each learner? It's an important thing. As we are confronted with a classroom consisting of children from diverse race, language, ability, interest, religious background. There is the need for the teachers to understand the diverse background of the learner. Secondly, are we able to understand student learning needs and style? Because we cannot use a particular strategy to teach concepts to all students. And even in technological, we know that we did this digital platforms. In digital platforms, sometimes we are giving one technological intervention to the learners. Are we able to individualize the needs of learners in digital platform also? This is one arising question that is that teachers we are confronting in front of our learner. And the styles of learning styles is differing from learner to learner. Thirdly, are we able to teach new concepts by using student vocabulary? Or are we using the dictionary vocabulary or the textbook vocabulary where there is no connection with the context of the learners? So there is a need for the teachers to use student vocabulary to introduce new concepts in front of learners. And next, are we able to integrate diverse study practices? Because are we able to give opportunity for the learners to express their ideas in multiple ways? And the next one, as I have already dis told you that the learners are coming from different backgrounds. Are we able to provide culturally responsive pedagogy? We know that the learners are coming from different cultures. And when we think of cultures, even in cultures also, there is different patterns followed in each family. We know that family as a social unit, it is existing in a culture. But in each family, there is different patterns followed. The parenting styles may be different. The way of interaction may be different. The language used may be different. So here comes the relevance of the culturally responsive pedagogy. The teacher plays a major role in determining meaning and sensitivity in the classroom. In teacher development and training, the thrust needs to be placed on <coughs> nurturing the nurtures. And 
we should also think that children seek opportunities for cognitive <coughs> stimulation, purposeful social exchange, emotional development, and cultural tolerance. In order to bring <coughs> the needs of children center stage, we must first ask certain questions. The first question, whom we teach, what we teach, how we teach, when we teach. So these four questions should decide each teacher's learning context. So with this, I am telling the activity that is a report on the growing up experiences of children and the impact on teaching learning process. Hope that as teachers, you have understand how we have to deal with children in different contexts and how the childhood in different contexts has exerts more important for a teacher to handle with the learners. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.